on this episode of The Playlist. Capture the moment with Matt Kania. Well, my approach right now is what's called a la prima. I'm trying to finish certain parts of the painting. That's um, kind of my mode of operation, is to challenge every artist to, to be better or to learn more. Christine Seitz, in charge at the Duluth Playhouse, and a front row seat for music guest Lion or Gazelle. You are my only friend, I'm waiting on you. When we get a chance to just sing for people and be opening up conversation, hopefully that's where we're headed because I think that's the most important thing about performing music. These artists and more coming up next. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Here we have Lion or Gazelle, and they bring the whole package, haunting harmonies, insightful songwriting, and they're here with us on the playlist tonight. Please welcome Lion or Gazelle. Holly wants to pay the rent, but she'll end up drinking in some dark hollow, dreaming of the river stairs. A finger in a crucifix well, He sailed the seven seas But he came back just for me But I can't give him love I can only touch what I can see Do you think he loves you? Oh, I'm not trying to make a scene But I've been thinking of you You're in my Trying to make a scene, but I've been thinking of you. Oh, you're in my every dream. Oh, heading down the road, but too drunk to hold myself. I thought of everyone, who made something of yourself. Winding streets named after you and me. The devil's in the leaf, is waiting for the trees to speak. And do you think he loves you? I'm not trying to make a scene, but I've been thinking of you. You're This is a newer one, like two days old. It was really, really new. We had a smush cake for it in the kitchen. <laughs> Much of you 
that your undying love will always be true. Sheep cigars and wait. I hung you. Dressed like a bed of wheel. You are my only friend. I'm waiting. I hung you. I said, Oh, baby, yeah, you drive me crazy. Oh. I said, Oh, baby, yeah, you drive me crazy. Oh. Rule one, do you remember that bum you ran into in the bathroom of the Radisson, washing himself with a rag, his clothes in a pile in the corner? He must have been in his 60s, all smiles and still retarded by his father's rage. Oh, that man, he said, the things he did to me and my mother, you wouldn't believe, friend. They made me stronger, and you thought you knew denial. Who are you now saying you could stop paying attention like you had worked hard enough already sometimes it's a matter of feeling yourself in an elevator push up through the floors like a finger through saran wrap or simply a matter of hearing hillside bells in little italy look you must remember the god you chose opened you like an oven and placed in you his favorite dish to simmer until you're ready your head like a buzzer to take it out and eat it We're here in the studio with Christine Seitz, the executive director of the Duluth Playhouse. Christine, welcome and thank you for coming over. Thank you, you bet. Love being here. So the Duluth Playhouse is officially 100 years old in yeah. 2014. It is 2014. Um, we've called this year journeying to the centennial 2014 marks that 100th year. What does it say about a community that had some vision in 1914 to say theater is something that we want in our community? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. The vision of the Duluth Playhouse back in 1914 started by a group of women who were sitting around a table and they had transplanted from the East Coast, so they were naturally used to going to the opera and theater and they wanted Duluth to be a culturally rich and exciting place to be, so they decided they wanted to start a theater company. But what was unique about their vision is that they wanted to to start uh, a, a theater group where the locals could get involved and they actually took it to the National Drama League and shared this idea that they had and they were discouraged to do such a thing because theater was reserved for professionals, not for local people to do. So um, they didn't care, they came back and they did it anyway. The reason is that they saw theater as um, a way for uh, the community to directly, hands-on, get involved in the arts. In your 100th year as the Playhouse, the Playhouse is moving out of its safe zone, to, so to speak, its own theater and staging Les Mis yeah, at the deck. at the deck. I know um, that 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 that's going to be a very big challenge, but why not? <laughs> Someone said, "Why are you doing this?" I was like, "Well, why not?" I mean, Les Mis is the uh, the world's most famous musical, and um, and if we were going to do this show, I wanted to do it. Um, at the highest caliber we possibly could. We wanted it to be part of our 100th anniversary season and it will be the highlight, the big kapow um, to our, our 100th year. And it seemed only right to make it the biggest community-wide event that we could. We're very excited to be collaborating with the symphony for the first time. We have the Minnesota Ballet involved as well. Robert Gardner will be choreographing it, and, and we've brought in um, an outstanding director choreographer from New York City, Dottie Danner, and so it's going to be an all-star cast and, and something to celebrate and, and remember for years to come. So tell me a little bit about your theater background. When did you get hooked on the stage? Oh, gosh, you know, it's funny. I, I um, I started dancing, you know, when I was four. This, this school of dance was uh, really aggressive in performance. So every weekend, I swear to you, we were tap dancing in the malls and performing all over the place, and I had costumes, and I just thought it was just the greatest thing. 
And that was just the natural transition that when I was in high school, I got involved with theater. And um, so that's how it all started. I moved to New York when I was very er young and um, found out when I got to New York, I had a lot of work to do. <laughs> I was this young little thing from Missouri, and I really didn't know a lot about anything. In New York, I did a few Broadway plays, a few off-Broadway plays, a lot of tours, a couple little stunts on uh, some soap operas, got killed off a soap opera once, literally. <laughs> some commercial work. But you know, um, I find myself now here actually um, in the place where I want to be and I should be and was always meant to be. And I, and I know that because I've never felt more creative than at my job at the Duluth Playhouse. You know, we got to see you work with the chorus line um, as, as a dancer and as a human being and a director. Yeah. Um, you, you work them pretty hard. Christine. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, because that's what I think it's all about. Working hard and achieving um, new heights as an artist. And, and that goes for me too. That's um, kind of my mode of operation is to challenge every artist to, to be better or to learn more or um, to develop new crafts and skills. If you are uh, uh, looking at theater as a profession, What's the landscape like? If um, someone's young and, and interested and feels like this is really what they want to do, then I would encourage them to be in dance, to be uh, taking voice, and to be involved even on a local level, level in the education department at the Playhouse or anywhere else that you can um, gain opportunities because uh, the best training is opportunity. You have to stick it out, you have to work hard, you have to continue to train and, um, and, and, and it's not easy. It's a market, you know, and, and you're the product. And this is something that I try to teach others is that what you have to remember is that there's only one of you in the whole entire world. So you need to focus on you and you need to be able to sell you because no one else can be better at that than you. And that's really key to me is to come into an audition and not compete against someone else because you're not them, you're you. So that is my overall message to youngsters is understand who you are, understand your strengths and skills, hone in on them, Get them so sweet and at the top of your game that when you walk in the door, if you're the person they want, you're going to get it. It's a tough road, but it's well worth it if it's what you love, you're committed to, and uh, you have the, the patience and the perseverance. I think that's great advice for life. So thank you for taking the time with us and giving us a little inspiration and, and some insight into the Playhouse. Thank you. Have a great 100th anniversary. Keep Big year ahead. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. My name is Evan Kelly from the Renegade Theatre Company. Uh, the show I'm excited about is a show called All New People. It was written by Zach Braff, uh, creator uh, and writer on Scrubs. Also, uh, The Garden State. Uh, it's a very Zach Braff show, very funny, uh, but a little bit dark at the same time. Uh, I'm very excited to see it. I'm very excited to see some of my favorite actors in town and one of my favorite shows. All New People opens January 23rd at the Renegade Theatre Company at Teatro Zaccone. Uh, you can find more information at renegadetheatercompany.org or at the Playlist website. As a painter, you want to just plant yourself in the perfect spot. Ideally, it's best to start and finish a plein air painting in one session which may be an hour, two hours, three hours, depending on the complexity of the scene and how you're responding to the, to the image. Well, the William A. Irvin is kind of overlooked by residents. They kind of take it for granted. I mean, it's really this incredible floating museum and it's quite a historic ship. And so it's something that I've been wanting to paint for a long time to kind of remind people what a special place it is. I really had only about an hour and a half of light in terms of how it was hitting the side of the hull of the Irvin. And once that light was gone, it was really pretty much over. I either come back another day or work from memory. I'll choose to come back another day and hope for similar light. While I'm working on a solo exhibition, 
of plein air oil paintings. And the theme for my show is Start Seeing Duluth. And it's literally paintings throughout Duluth. So in Glensheen is certainly iconic and it's absolutely beautiful here. The gardens, the, the building itself, inside, outside, it's just really a wonderful place to be. The sun is very important for this painting because this is a light and shadow painting. Well, my approach right now is what's called a la prima. I'm trying to finish certain parts of the painting uh, because my light is changing so rapidly. When the sun comes back, then I'll probably go back into the light areas and begin capturing those color notes. There are many ways to begin a painting, and the scene really tells you the best way to begin that painting. In this particular instance, it was very important to me to get the architecture of the scene correct. You know, I'm not going to, you know, paint every little terracotta brick, you know, or any of those kinds of things. It's about how the light hits those objects and that's what I'm responding to as a viewer. And when I painted this, I just simply thought about the Condon family just enjoying this porch every summer. So I really enjoyed setting up for a couple of days. For me as a painter, I will continue painting in Duluth for many, many years to come. And I'm very excited about where that will take me throughout the city.
Lion or Gazelle? Sophie Turk, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Tell me a little bit how this this duo and sometimes more came to be. Trio. Um, Brian, I was introduced to him when he was working on I Might Love You, his album that he did mostly by himself with Mickey Pearson and Matt Mobley and Jake Willis. And I heard that it was going to be good, so I emailed him and I was like, maybe we should try singing together. So I expertly attached myself to his coattails and then hung on. Kicked Did everyone else out. No, it's just <laughs> <laughs> Your voices blend really beautifully. So how, how, did, how does that develop? Would, from the first time you sang together or has that changed over time? I don't think so. I think the first time we sang we were really nervous and Brian was like half gonna fire me the minute I walked in and then um, we got more comfortable, we got to know each other, and then um, I think I'm used to singing with behind someone, like I grew up doing that, and Brian has a really good voice, and I think having to sing with someone seriously has helped him become better as a singer, and so we've both kind of grown into it, you know. We've sung together for a year now, so. And at this point, um, is Brian doing the songwriting, or tell me how yeah, songs Brian come about? All those songs um, Brian wrote, and they're beautiful. Like, it's funny how he writes songs that I can sing easily as my own if I wanted to, and it's nice of him to share with me. You already have signed with Chaperone Records, which is pretty signed. exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, but tell tell me wh what's that been like? Um, well, it's. It's obviously nice because we can use the studio space and record at will, which isn't something that a lot of people can do. So we're spoiled in that way. And um, Bob is great. Like, you know, he's really generous and has been like really working with us and helping us get gigs and get heard. And we appreciate that a lot. So it's been really nice. You've been playing near, I, I say near and far. Because I know that you've played some gigs in Minneapolis already. Um, what's a good gig feel like? Something like this is great, where we can just be heard and like hopefully enjoyed. You know, if not, just at least heard and you know pondered for a few minutes in silence. There are lyrics in there that I want to ponder. You know, so when when a song comes to you, um, how do you how do you, what do you bring to it? Do you have to? listen to it and sing it for a while and think about it or is it okay yes I get this well usually with Brian um, he plays me a song and and like it depends on my reaction but nine times out of ten I'm like oh my god and I like he knows like if it's good by the way that I overreact um, what has the reaction been so far to your first album um, well we have the I might love you it's a vinyl like LP and it's Brian did it um, before I joined the band so it's really cool and it's we had this like weird group of <laughs> people that listened to it on repeat like in eight Taco Bell <laughs> like we heard this um, from someone who, so we have these like super fans they're from the south and like apparently they love it but I I really like that one it's different it's really far out and then our our EP is online and that's us together with Mobley and it's it's weird and good but we're working on something new that's going to be even different, so, yeah. Last question is where will it go from here? Um, <laughs> as far as <laughs> we can handle. We're kind of adult babies, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but <laughs> right now we're enjoying um, when we get a chance to just sing for people and be heard and then talk after. Like that's Hopefully that's where we're headed because I think that's the most important thing about performing music in general opening up conversation with people. Thank you for taking the time. Awesome job. Yeah, Sophie, thanks. awesome job. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, I 
will watch you. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by viewers like you.